Children, family, children, family, what's up, man? USCJ here. It's the top of the morning. It's the top of the morning. Listen, I hope everybody had a blessed weekend. I hope everybody's doing well, um, even as they get up, because I know it's, it's pretty early, man. USCJ hitting it to you this morning. But listen, want to talk about USC, uh, the comments that uh, Lincoln Riley actually made um, right after the game. He says he's proud of his team, the way they play. We want to talk about that because some might get it confused. We want to look at what context he was actually saying it in and see what exactly he means behind that. I want to read some of this article that I got. It's from The Athletic. Also, we want to look at the AP Top 25, USC's ranked number nine in the country. Uh, what does this mean? And, and, and also look at the strength of schedule. Um, there's another list that came out. You got the top you got the top three conferences. Uh, actually, you got the ACC, you got the SEC, and you got the Pac-12. All have five teams. They're the only conferences that have five teams ranked in the top 25. USC is now involved in the conference this year. Um, and, and it hasn't been like this in the past. Involved in a conference that has more parity. I said, I've been saying this from the beginning. It looked like this conference has had so much parity right now that we hadn't seen in a long time. The Pac-12 used to be like this, a lot of parity. So let, let's talk about that as well. But right now, I want you guys to take a look at, I want you guys to take a look at this list, this top 25 list uh, coming from the AP poll. So here it is right here. Um, you got the AP top 25 by conferences. And as you see here, you see here five teams from the SEC, Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, Ole Miss, and LSU. And uh, you look at the ACC, five teams as well, Clemson, North Carolina, Wake Forest, North Carolina State, and uh, Syracuse. You look at the, uh, look at the next one, the Pac-12, Oregon, USC, UCLA, Utah, and, of course, Oregon State. Um, which Oregon State should have been ranked from the get-go. Um, but then you come down to the Big Ten. They got four teams, Michigan, Ohio State, Illinois, Penn State, Big 12, three teams, uh, TCU, Kansas State, and Oklahoma State that just got blown out with a 48-0 to zero against Kansas State. Uh, and so, and then, of course, you know these, the, the smaller teams, uh, uh, American Conference, Tulane, and uh, Central Florida, UCF. Um, and then you got the one independent. Uh, Liberty. So, so that's, uh, you know, and it shows you here, man. I mean, the ACC Pac-12 and the Big Ten, uh, the uh, uh, SEC, those are the most conference, th those are the conferences that have uh, the, the most parity in it, man. I mean, we, you, you see, it, I mean, it's a lot of parity. And I can argue that, you know, Wake Forest and some of those other schools, North Carolina and even, um, uh, Shoot, man, I would even say even Syracuse. I'm not so sure, sure some of those teams within the ACC should be ranked where they're at, but that's a whole other story. But I can honestly say within the Pac-12, all five of those teams are, are, are worthy of being in the top 25. Let's move on and take a look at uh, – I say the same thing as well for the most part with the SEC. If you guys hit me, let me know if you think anything is, is wrong with that picture. You see they tried to put South Carolina – in the top 25 the past weekend, but they, they didn't, they didn't stand a chance with, within uh, last and for a week because they got beat up on by Missouri. So you see that team is out as well, but they want to make sure they get their five teams. They want to make sure that nobody else beats them with having more teams. So they had to make sure they put five teams in there. So you guys hit me. Let's take a look at the AP poll. All right, this is the AP poll here. And you see here the new one uh, that just came out yesterday, Georgia, Ohio State, Tennessee. Uh, here they go once again with this 2-2 two and two stuff. They had 10-10 ten and 10 with Wake Forest and uh, USC last week, but now they got it here, 2-2. Two and two. Um, I, And I understand how the voting process work, works, but they can, put, they can go ahead and put one. Um, you, let me ask you guys this. Who do you guys think is more? 
uh, worthy of having the number two spot. Ohio State or Tennessee? Right now, uh, if, I, if I'm going to say a, a, a team, I know Tennessee beat Kentucky, but I'm still going to say Ohio State. They beat a good Penn State team at Penn State. It's clearly it's clear to me Ohio State is the number two team in the country. I put Tennessee at number two. Number four, I'm going to put Michigan. Number five, I'm moving Clemson out of the way. And Clemson, Clint, to me, Clemson cannot beat Alabama. I don't think Clemson could beat TCU. I mean, that's just my opinion. Uh, so you see uh, TCU number seven and uh, Oregon number eight. And then you got us at number nine, USC number nine, UCLA number 10. When's the last time the Pac-12 had three teams in the top 10? Unbelievable. That's showing you right now that there's big time parity. And uh, and uh, and so then you got Ole Miss number 11, Utah number uh, 12, 13 is going to be Kansas State, 14, Illinois, 15, LSU, 16, Penn State, 17, North Carolina, Oklahoma State. Man, they got blown out. I'm just – I'm kind of wondering about that whole thing. It's, it's kind of weird. Uh, number 19, Tulane, 20, Wake Forest, 21, North Carolina State, uh, 22, Syracuse, 23, Liberty, 24, Oregon State. Finally got up in there. And 25 is going to be UCF. So what do you guys think about that? That is uh that is very very uh interesting to even, to have uh, now the Pac-12 got three teams in the top ten. Listen, the Pac-12 is a legit conference, man. In spite of what everybody's saying, the Pac-12 is legit. The article here, and I don't think people really understand the significance of the importance of the win and how a lot of people stepped up. But here it is right here, why Lincoln Riley was so proud um, of an eight-point win. Well, we're going to get into it and see exactly what, what uh, Lincoln Riley was making reference to. Um, of course, we were favored by 15 points, most of us know, and uh, it was a 3-5 and five team, but let's take a look at it here. Um, this is what it's making reference to here. It says it here. It says USC was missing several key pieces. Um it played without its top two receivers, Jordan Addison, Mario. Of course, you know, linebacker Eric Gentry, Randall Goforth. Um, and then it, it talks about here, Andrew Voorhees being out as well, Corey Foreman. But then check this out. It then says in the second half, um, it lost its starting left tackle, Bobby Haskins, to an apparent left arm shoulder injury. Uh, so the Trojans ended up without the starting tackles after the right tackle, Jonah Monheim, moved to the right guard. Um, in place of Justin Didich, um, who slid over to the left guard. Um, so this is the article right here, and I wanted just I wanted you guys to really have a clear understanding that that USC was missing quite a few players last night, and, and to be able this is what he was talking about. He was making reference to um, um, to be able to step up. Uh, you know, we of course we had the receivers already. The receivers was there. We weren't too worried about that. But when you start dealing with interior players, when you start dealing with linebacker play, and when you're dealing with players on the offensive line, that could really cause problems. And if we weren't careful, uh, USC really could have been all the way lost in the sauce and could have lost the game as a result of that. Listen, we want to pray that these guys get healthy, man, because I mean, we already suffered um, uh, you know, uh, quite a few injuries already, and we the, the, the hope is that these guys actually recover and so for 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 those who take it out of context uh here it is right here what he says he says i'm so proud of the win as of any um of the seven this year without doubt coach riley said after the game um he later explained we were just he said we just weren't going to let anything uh get us and listen even though we lost the players even though we lost quite a few players and a, a lot of players weren't healthy <clears throat> Lincoln Riley was saying that he was proud of the fact that even though we were down uh, with some of these players, we still able to. And listen, let's 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 keep it real. All year long, we've had to battle refs. We had to battle different circumstances, and to be able to still maintain for those who said we got an extremely weak weak roster and still able to still be able to pull it out a win at away from home and be able to make it happen that's saying a lot about our coaching that's saying a lot about our team and the fight that's within them that's saying a lot about the team as a whole and so listen man I think I think we should be more excited uh and, and don't be so down on the team because they fought through when you talk about fighting on I mean they really fought on as it relates to that and uh being able to sustain and maintain uh the win a win in the win column so that's the article right there. And, and, and you asked me, 
Does USCJ agree with Lincoln Riley? Absolutely, because we have sustained quite a few injuries. Now, when you talk about the defensive side of the ball, let me let me ask you guys this. If you guys, you you know, I hear a lot of people making reference to Alex Grinch. And this is Alex Grinch's first year. He hadn't even had a full recruiting class. They're shuffling and putting pieces together to try to make, to, you know, to try to make this thing happen. And if you guys be honest about this, let's take a, th let's take a look at this and think about this. Think about it from this perspective. I think we've gotten more on the offensive side. If we got the same caliber on the offensive side that we've got through the portal on the defensive side, uh, I, I don't think it would be such a such a gap. I think we were hurting um, last year more so on the defensive side uh, as it relates to, uh, or, uh, uh, than the offensive side. And so I think as a result, you're seeing it suffer. You're seeing it suffer a lot more. We've already had the receivers. That's why you're not seeing a big drop off from the offensive production as it relates to the defensive production. We couldn't afford to lose anybody like Gentry and then even Randall Gopher who comes in and backs up Gentry. And uh, and listen, we still could have used even more within the interior play um, as it relates to the portal. So listen, I think those those guys are coming up, stepping up like Tyrone Cellini. He's stepping up. Uh, some of the guys that came in, of course, you know, Thule, he's doing his thing. Solomon Bird. Listen, listen, we lost a lot, <clears throat> but we're gaining a lot. And so I think you got to look at it from this perspective. Alex Grinch, he has another year. He has a year to get his class in, and we got the players that's coming in. And listen, they're going to be able to – he's going to be able to utilize those speed guys the way – because it fits it fits his system. Uh, am I a big fan of the 3 5 Not necessarily, but I've seen it run this year in other teams, and I've seen success. So listen, you guys hit me in the comment section. Should Lincoln Riley be proud of the way the team has performed? Uh, you guys hit me. Let me know. Until tomorrow, listen, fight on, fight on, fight on.